the next talk uh, is a paper called The Style Aware Content Loss for Real Time HD Style Transfer. Uh, and the authors are Atsyom Sanakoev, uh, Dimitro Kotovyanko, uh, Sabina Lang, and Bjorn Omar from the University of Heidelberg. And Atsyom will be giving the talk. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Artyom Sanakoev, and I'm here today to present our paper, A Style Aware Content Loss for Real Time HD Style Transfer. This is a joint work with Dmitry Kedavenko, Sabine Lang, and Bjorn Omer. Dr. Sabine Lang has a PhD in art history, and she is also a member of our group in Heidelberg University. We are trying to solve a problem of image to image translation. And in this case, we want to translate a photography into a painting. And to do this well, we need not only to understand style, but to understand which part of the content to retain, which part of the content to disregard, and which to alter, and how. And this highly depends on the artist and his style. Here you can see different examples of paintings in different styles. And if you look at the leftmost image of René Magritte, then every object is important there and its configuration is seen. If you go further and look at the middle image of Munch in expressionist style, then the content becomes less and less important here. And what gets more important is the shape, especially curved lines on the painting. If we go any further to the most abstract style, which is the painting of Kazim Malevich, black square, then you don't see any content at all. It's basically just a black square. But what is style? Art historian says that style is an expression of a collective spirit which results in distinctive manner which can allow us to group works into related categories. And this is important to note that a single artist can work in different styles during his lifetime. Take a look at the images on the slide. Here are three images depicted in three different styles, but they were produced by the same artist, a Picasso. Let's quickly recapitulate what is style transfer. The first and the best currently approach is approach from Gadis et al. from CPR 2016. Given a content image and a style example, we want to produce a new image which will have the same content but different style. Let's take two and I wanted to note that here, a style presentation is a gram matrix, which is based on the VGG features. And this VGG network should be pre-trained on ImageNet. Let's take two examples of surrealist style of Picasso and produce two stylizations. Examples come from the same style, but the result looks different in two cases, which actually contradicts with the statement that the style should allow us to group artworks into related categories. Maybe we just need to take more style examples, and then we can do better. Let's see, can actually existing methods generalize, and can they make use of more style examples than a single one? The most simplistic approach is just to take every image in the style set and compute a an pixel-wise average of them, and then use this average image for stylization. And of course, it doesn't work. Maybe we need to do something more elaborate. Let's take every single image in the style set and compute a gram matrix, and then aggregate these gram matrices somehow. We can do element-wise minimum, element-wise maximum, or element-wise uh, average. The average worked the best, but still you can see that it's not better than just taking a single style example. So we propose something new here, because we can achieve um, better results with just using gram matrices. We start building our approach from all beloved encoded decoder architectures. The input image is a content image, and the output is a stylization. We utilize a standard adversarial loss, which tries to discern painting, real painting, from uh, generalized stylization. But here we don't see any content, and probably we need to add some content losses. Existing approaches propose to use RGB loss, which is a distance in the RGB space between an input and output image. And the second loss is perceptual loss, which is L2 distance in the space of features of pre-trained VDG network. But the approach, these approaches have their drawbacks. The first, they're fixed, and they do not depend on the style. So if you change the style from Picasso to Magritte or to uh, some, somebody else, these loss functions will still be the same. So they don't depend on the style. And second, perceptual loss has to, be, has to use a network which is pre-trained on ImageNet. What we want to achieve is to condition these losses on the specific style set. And to achieve this, we introduce two novel losses. The first is a transformed image loss, 
which is not just a, a, a comparison in the RGB space, but after a slight transformation of input and output image. And this transformation is achieved by a single convolution layer. The second content loss compares input and output image in the space of the features of the encoder, which is trained jointly with the decoder and the discriminator. And this loss we call a style away content loss, because in this case, the features adapt to the specific style set, which is currently used for training. Let's take a closer look what is style away content loss. It's essentially L2 distance between encoded content image and encoded content of a stylized image. And encoder features in this case play a role of a style-dependent content representation. And in the bottom right corner, you can see a reconstruction of the content from the features of the encoder. Let's take a closer look at more examples of what this style of content loss does and which content details will be preserved in the encoder feature space. If you look at the stylization of Pollock and at the reconstruction which we got from the encoder features for Pollock, then you don't see much of a content which totally makes sense, and this is exactly what we want to achieve, because Pollock has a really abstract style. If you look at reconstruction for Cezanne, then you see blobby structures and larger palette of colors. And this is exactly what Cezanne does. He used to, he liked to use thick brush strokes with, bra with uh, white brushes, and also uh, much more colors. So to generalize, to summarize, Stalovay content loss enforces encoder to focus only on those details of the content which are important for the specific style. Our full objective function is composed of three losses. It's a Stalovay content loss, it's transformed image loss, and a discriminator loss. Take a look at three image patches. Can you guess which were painted by Claude Monet and which were generated by our approach? Actually, the middle one was generated by us, and the others were painted by Manet. Here comes an example of a high-resolution stylization by our approach in a style of late Vincent van Gogh. Take a look at the selected regions. In the bottom region, you can see a prominent white brush strokes in the vertical direction. In the top region, the brush strokes are thinner, but they have different directions. And this shows that our approach can, ge can generate various brush strokes for a spe specific style. Here comes more examples of um, stylizations from our approach for different styles and different content images. We also compared our method with other approaches existing. And we actually had plenty of comparisons. But let's focus only on those which focus the best. It's ours, Gaddis et al. and Cycle Gun. Let's zoom in. Here you can see that our approach can produce more convincing stylistic details. And overall, it looks better and more diverse. But I have shown you a lot of images, but there is no quantitative evaluation. We wanted to come up with some metric which can quantitatively evaluate how good is the style transfer, because currently there is no existing metric which can do it. And so we call it a deception rate. To compute deception rate, we pre-train a, a network which classifies paintings according to the artists. And then we fix a specific stylization method, we fix a style, and we take a bunch of content images. We, ge we generate stylizations for every of the content images, and then we show every stylization to a classifier. And then if classifier says that this is Picasso, but that was not a real Picasso, but just a stylization in style of Picasso, some style of Picasso, then the deception score goes up. You can see that on deception rate, our approach outperforms others on a significant margin. Another quantitative evaluation is an ad history on expert score. We invited three ad history experts with PhD in ad history and focus on modern and pre-modern ad, and asked them to look at the stylizations produced on the same content image and the same style image by different methods. And they had to choose one stylization which depicts a specific style in the better way than the other methods. And then we repeated a lot of times for different content and style pairs. And you can see that our stylizations were preferred in almost 50% of the cases. Talking about speed and memory, our approach is fast. It can generate video stylization at 14 FPS 
on resolution 768 by 768 pixels. And it requires only one gigabyte GPU memory. As a matter of fact, it's not bounded to a specific input size, because it's a fully convolutional network and can be applied to arbitrary input sizes. This is an example of video stylization by approach in style of Cezanne, Picasso, and Kandinsky. Every quadrant has a resolution of 1920 by 1260 pixels. We produce these stylizations in a frame-by-frame -frame manner, so no temporal smoothing were applied. You don't see much of the jittering here, and that means that our approach is quite stable. We also have much more experiments and more results on our poster. So if you want to see more, if you have, want to see ablation studies, if you want to see stylizations in different style periods of Van Gogh, or altering a style of an existing artwork to a different style, then please come over to our poster. It's poster number 87. So to summarize, we have a model which enables a set of style images and can preserve content in a style-specific manner. It can also work fast for HD video style transfer without any temporal smoothing. And we've also introduced a novel metric for quantitative evaluation of style transfer. Our source code and models are available on GitHub, and also visit our project page to see more results. Thank you. Can you we have time for a few questions. Please step forward to the mics at the front. Um, I'll start with one. Um, so you had this uh, uh, kind of artist classification uh, loss that you decide used to evaluate the performance of your network, uh, the pre-trained artist classifier. Uh, I'm curious, if you use that actually in training, would your results improve further qualitatively? Are you talking about the classification network which was used for Evaluating? Yes. No, we don't use it during training at But all. if you use that, would that would your results sort of qualitatively improve more? Sorry, can you repeat? I don't hear much. So, so if you use the artist classifier, the features learned from the artist classification task as a loss in training, like qualitatively, do the results get better? Probably it could improve results, but we just wanted to avoid these explicit okay. labels. OK. And uh, I guess one thing you're suggesting is that there is Content is just completely style specific, which means you need to train a different network for every style. Have you thought of like you know if there is some semi-universal notion of content? Exactly. So I can say that uh, as I already said that the content is result specific to the style, so it's really important. Different artists see content in different ways. Sure. Something is important for one, some another thing is not important for this artist. Are you talking about combining several artists in the same network? Uh, potentially, or maybe like a universal part and a small other part that can be then trained. Separately. Yeah, it could be. I think maybe you could employ this conditional uh, uh, normalization layers okay. and then encapsulate information from more artists in the same network. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, if there are no more questions, let's thank the speaker.